The best play in Madden 24 is the Gun Bunch Offset Double Post. And we're in this video, we're gonna show you why this play is so effective and what you can, how you can kind of optimize it against the current defensive meta. A lot of people right now are rocking the dollar defense with a lot of different types of setups and, and different things. So I uh, just wanna go over kind of why this play is as good as it is and why this is truly the most powerful play in Madden 24. Now, for this setup, all we're going to do is we're just going to put the slot receiver on a fade, and we're going to snap the ball. Now, you could put him on a streak. You could also put him on a fade. The beauty of the fade is it will do some interesting things against uh, zone, which we'll talk about here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to basically snap the ball and kind of let the routes run, and then we'll talk about why this play is so effective and uh, what you can kind of uh, glean from this. So double post is the most effective play in Madden, in my opinion, because of a couple of things. The first reason why is because it is a, it's a powerful play in the sense that it has what I would call uh, power routes. What do you mean when you say power routes? I mean routes that can consistently attack man and zone coverage and also routes that, when not usered, are very, very effective. So as you'll see here, another, another really underrated um, kind of point about why double post is so good is it attacks the whole field. The tight end attacks this right side flat area of the field early. The running back attacks this kind of inner or underneath middle. You would need like a little three rec hook to play this underneath. And then he's going to drag across and attack kind of the vertical hook space. And then eventually he'll kind of come over here and attack the flat, as you can see here. So the cool part about this is this curl flat defender or quarter flat is backing up with this tight end wheel. Uh, because the tight end wheel is kind of running this guy back into coverage. So he's now becoming an intermediate flat threat. And then this guy is now attacking the underneath flat. Again, like I said, the cool part about the tight end route is a lot of people have figured out it's not just that it's a flat route, but it curl or wheels up field. And it actually serves to be able to attack zone in this little soft spot. And we'll actually show you that in this next, uh, in this next play. So what we're going to do is we're going to fade this guy. And if they hard flat on the outside to try to stop the running back route, then what you're going to see is when that tight end curls up field, we could throw this up and just possession catch that. And a lot of times he's going to be wide open. Now, if you want this to get a little bit more open specifically against that defense, then you want to run this play to the short side of the field. Again, another cool part about double post is you could run it to either hash mark and have different setups uh, for the play. So you see here, same exact play, but now just because we're over here, that outside quarter has to follow that fade. And as you can see, the tight end gets open. So if we come back into instant replay, if you think about what we're able to do here to the right side of the screen, we're able to attack the flat area of the field to the right. We're able to then attack the intermediate area of the field. And then super late in the play, we can actually attack the deep sideline here on the right side of the screen. So that's kind of the right side of this play. And then if we take a look here in the middle of the field, we're able to attack the underneath middle of the field right in here. We're able to attack the deep middle of the field with this fade or streak. And then we're also able to attack the intermediate middle of the field over here to the right side. So we're able to attack the whole right side of the field. We're able to attack the middle of the field. And then if you look here to the left side, we're also able to attack kind of the intermediate flat over here on the left. So that is one of the real underrated reasons as to why double post is so effective because it truly is one of those plays that attacks the entire field. Now combine that with the fact that really the meta coverages this year I've really been one of three different coverages. The first coverage is a baseline and press, uh, a baseline and press cover four. And this coverage has potential to bomb that. You'll see here, this post is also gonna kind of be able to, so one other thing I forgot to say, while we're able to attack the, um, the intermediate middle of the field with this play setup, we're still also able to attack the deep sideline on the left. And you'll see that right here. So you see how that attacks the deep sideline. That's a cover four drop defense. And we're able to get a big play over the top against that coverage shell. Another coverage that is really popular is the like the free safety zone blitz, for example. That's a cover three base. And it's typically something like what you see here on your screen. So they're going to run this little kind of cover three base from a shell perspective. If we're able to pick up the blitz, which, you know, try ID and slot corners or whatever you need to do to pick it up. Then what you're going to see here is 
this is going to burn this coverage even better than it was burning the cover four. So you kind of come back into this position. You put the defense in a position where really the they have really one of two options. The first option is they can just use her the post route, okay? The second option, and really the more prevalent option, is that they can go to different covered shells. So one of those covered shells essentially would be the quarter, quarter, half. I think this is one of the better ways to defend double posts. But again, where do we have issues with this setup? On the left hand or on the right hand side. While this cloud flat deep half combo will do a pretty good job of defending the post route and do a pretty good job of defending the C route, now you have all of this stuff underneath that is super, super open as Andrew Luck threw the ball five yards ahead of the receiver. Um, but anyway, you see there, I mean, the, the running back's open. I can show that again. We'll just show it here. So you see just kind of a simple little drag underneath. And while that's not a big, big yard gainer um, for you or a big play, it's still a yard gainer and it's still very effective. Now let's talk about like this kind of concept here. So like, let's say they go with this little cover two shell to the left. One of the things is they, from a user perspective, this is what's really interesting. So most of the time the user is going to be in the middle of the field. This defender is probably going to blitz in most defenses that you'll face. So they're going to be down here and they're going to have to choose. Are they going to guard the running back or the double post post route? So in this situation, they're going to guard the running back. So if we wait on this post route, as long as we have some time, throw it right in here, we can actually sometimes get this in against a deep half, even if that deep half does have deep end zone KO. So while the deep half will prevent the bomb aspect of the play, it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to prevent the actual post route. And we'll show that again. You'll see here kind of throw it right in there against that half. And this is another reason why this play is so powerful. So now what do they have to do from a defensive perspective? Well, they're going to have to basically do this. They're going to have to come out in their cover four. They're going to shade outside underneath. And then they're going to have to go use the tight end uh, or the post route. So this is kind of back to the, our original point in the beginning of the video where we talked about how valuable this tight end wheel route is late in this play. As you can see right there, even against that cover four, um, and that was actually pretty good defense. But again, if we're short side, they can't really do that adjustment. And we'll show that and we'll explain that a little bit more here. So if they do that adjustment where they shade this guy underneath and they have the hard flat here, let's say they use the post route. Now there's nobody in the middle of the field underneath to take the running back. So what you'll see is when the tight end curls up field, He's going to get open on the sideline. Now, the streak right there, I used a streak to the slot receiver. It didn't clear out the quarter. But what we know about zone logic in Madden this year is if you use a fade route, oftentimes it clears out quarters a little better. So what you'll see here is I'm going to fade him. He'll just take a quick sidestep. Then he gets up in the, in the middle. That quarter is now completely taken away. And you see there, we're able to throw our tight end once he turns up field and to be able to get a, play, a big play that way. Now, you might say, okay, super advanced player might repurple this guy to try to re-trigger matching principles to take away the tight end route. But again, and this is, where, this is why this play is so good, you'll see here, I can just throw the running back underneath. And this is what I mean by it's able to attack the majority of the space on the field. Now combine that with another setup of double posts that a lot of us probably know very well, which is basically this setup. And think about what this setup is going to accomplish. We're able to attack the left side of the field in a lot of different ways. We're able to attack, this is almost essentially the same play, except instead of all of the threats that are able to attack to the right side, now those threats are going to be able to attack to the left side. So what you're going to see here is if they run cover four or cover three for that matter, this C route is going to cut to the outside and you'll be able to throw this on the sideline and possession catch it as you can see. The wheel route does a great job of clearing out the quarters. It clears out the thirds and it allows us to throw this C route to the left. Now the other really cool factor that this also plays into it is you might say, Okay, well, what if they were to do something like this, where they were to use a cloud flat over here to the left side? A cloud flat is a really good adjustment, and that's the whole purpose behind putting this tight end drag here. So what you'll see is that cloud flat's gonna go back, and now we have that underneath drag to be able to check down to. So what we've created on that left side is a high low to the left, where we're attacking the deep left sideline with the wheel, 
We're attacking the intermediate left sideline with the C route, and we're attacking the flat left sideline with the tight end route. So what they are going to have to do is they're going to have to user the tight end underneath. Now, it would take a very advanced player to be able to slow this down because the, the lurk has got to be really on point here. But what you'll see that that's going to create, which is kind of interesting, is now you're going to be able to throw your post route right in that intermediate middle area of the field, okay? Uh, and actually got a KO there. I need a possession catch that probably. We'll show you that again. So again, let's say they're doing this. This guy, they put him in a purple to try to hang with the C route. They might have to even back him off, or they might have to put the purple from this guy for that matter. I mean, it's it's kind of um, you know just different adjustments, of course. But let's say, again, that they kind of say, okay, I'm going to go underneath with the tight end route because that's the only route that can beat me to the left-hand side. Well, a lot of times what they'll end up doing is they'll forget about the fact that you have this post that you can throw Kind of right in here, again, that possession catch. And what I've found with these possession catches over the last couple weeks is these possession catches will do a really good job of being able to actually avoid the KOs. I feel like I don't know that they're doing a better job than they did before, but it kind of seems like they are. So as you can see, what we have here and what we've created is a play um, within two plays that we're able to do a lot of different things. And so maybe one of the adjustments that our opponent uses is to play cover two to the left, to play cover four to the right, um, to shade outside underneath, put a purple. I mean, you can see all these adjustments we're having to do, right? And then, you know, so again, like I said, you know, now we're running these kind of like hybrid coverage, you know, I'm taking this route or, or whatever. And then we just kind of like change it up on them, so to speak. So uh, then we might go with this setup of double post, which is we're going to streak the solo wide receiver. We're going to maybe curl this receiver, just do something basic like this. And now you're able to get this crosser over the top of a cloud flat, and they have to use zone drops to actually be able to defend that. The cool part about the double post route is if they use the double Mabel coverage, that C route will get underneath a 30-yard cloud flat. So there's just so many ways within this formation and specifically within this one play to be able to attack defenses. When you have the capabilities that a formation like this affords you to have, this is kind of the foundation of a good offense. You have a power play. You have a counter version of that power play. You have um, different types of constraint theory plays off of that. You have routes with, I think, the key to offense, and Madden, at least from a uh, understanding like what offense that you want to be in, what formation, it's the formation that can attack the entire, the, the most amount of space on the field. And that, to me, is Gun Bunch offset this year. Um, you could make a good argument for Bunch Strong, but really, if you think about it, it's Bunch or Bunch Strong offset. Bunch offset, Bunch Strong offset. Those are the two main offenses this year uh, for good reason. They're very effective. So anyways, uh, this is how you can literally run double posts for an entire game using two setups where you're going to probably be able to attack the majority of defenses that you face and you're going to make it so that you can just master the reads, which is really the ultimate thing that you need to be able to do to become better at Madden is you need to master your progressions and you need to not throw interceptions. And the key to doing that, I think, part in part is keeping your offense simple enough so that you're actually able to execute your plays. If you guys want to learn more about offense and Madden, just take your game to the next level in general. I would really encourage you to check out the Patreon. The Patreon is going to be linked down below. We actually have an entire ebook out of this Colts offensive playbook. We've got several of them. If you want to get access to any of that stuff, the link's down below. Ten bucks will get you access to everything. Thanks for watching the video, guys. Hope this was helpful um, for just kind of a framework for understanding the idea of what makes a real power play in Madden and how you can use one or two plays to be able to literally attack the entire field, which is going to open up your entire offense. Thanks for watching the video. To sign up for the Patreon, head down to the description and click the link down below.